This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. From Abraham came two sets of offspring. The first offspring was the physical seed of Abraham. The second is the spiritual seed of Abraham. The physical seed of Abraham is the Jewish race. But the spiritual seed of Abraham is every person from all nations who have put their faith and trust in the seed of Abraham, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, in your seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. We have been so increasingly barraged by people just, uh, you know, loving the broadcast and telling us about it and calling us and and uh, sending notes about it and dropping emails and stuff to us just tell us how much the show has blessed them. And you know what? Also, many ministers are being are happy for it because it's like new, new sermon material for you. I pastored for 33 years, so it really comes back to the things I have learned through the years. And you know, when you're a pastor, you have to teach all types of subjects. And so being raised in a Pentecostal and then also later charismatic background, it's so easy to get caught up in just those areas. But you know what? You have to teach other parts of the Word of God. That's what we'll be teaching today. We're going to talk about Israel's present role in the earth today. And so this is, you know, I, just, I love to get into these areas because not that many churches teach on it. Even pastors don't teach on it. They kind of ride a hobby horse in one particular area or two particular areas. But I just see that the whole Word of God is given for our whole life. Every area of life can be found in the Word of God and teach on it. So again, I want to thank all of you who have been so blessed by the broadcast. If you'd like to become a partner with me, just go to my website, bobyandian.com. You'll find a place on there where you can become a partner. And I love my partners. Pray for you every day. Thank you so much because as I look around, all the blessings God has given me, our studio, our offices, our mailing list and all that, you are a great part of it because I couldn't do it by myself. And I can tell you this, when we get to heaven, I'm gonna stand there expecting to get rewards and God's gonna pass it out to all of you first and then I'll be the last one to receive it. So that'll be fine with me. Let's talk about four areas in the word of God that should not be difficult, but are. They all start out with this particular uh, phrase that I would not have you ignorant. And so one is Old Testament types and shadows, the purpose of the law. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses one through four, he, uh, uh, Paul points out that they went through the, the sea, the Red Sea, and, and they were overshadowed. Uh, they were overshadowed by the cloud above them, the water on each side of them, as much like a type of baptism. So there's that. Then the next of all is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses one and two. Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 53, is the third one that is the rapture of the church. Concerning those who are asleep, I would not have you ignorant. All three of those are telling us basically this. When it says, I would not have you ignorant, it simply says this is not rocket science. And yet, do you think about that? Old Testament types and shadows, the gifts of the Spirit, the rapture of the church. You know what each one of them say to most Christians? Eh, They want to blank out on it. It's just too hard, too difficult. And in each case, Paul says, I would not have you ignorant. This is a phrase that Paul used. But one other time, Israel's role during the church age is brought out in Romans chapter 11 and verse 25, because people don't understand it. They don't understand well, what's the purpose of Israel today? And, you know, then there's people that actually put it down. Israel has no future. Oh, yes, they do. A strong future in the tribulation and especially in the millennium is where Jesus Christ will personally come and rule from in the temple there in Jerusalem. So again, this one has to do with Israel's role during the church age. Turn with me to that verse of scripture, Romans chapter 11 and verse 25. Here we find the temporary, and I want you, if you write it down, underline that word, the temporary blind blindness of Israel. They are only partially blind, but only temporarily. Romans 11 verse 25, I do not desire brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part, that means only a short time and also means that they're not totally blind, they're just partially blind, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness 
of the Gentiles has come in. The fullness of the Gentiles will end at the rapture of the church. That's the Gentile time period that's lasted for almost 2,000 years from the time of the day of Pentecost, actually over 2,000 years until today. And it says there again that their blindness will be lifted at the time when the church is taken out. So we have again the temporary blindness of Israel. This is starting to tell us from this verse of scripture about what God is doing with Israel today. Uh, the seed of Abraham, Genesis chapter 22 and verse 17. Turn with me there if you would. Uh, turn back to the Old Testament. Notice in verse 17, it says, in blessing, I will bless you, God speaking to Abraham, and multiplying, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven, as the sand of the seashore, and your seed will possess the gates of the enemy. And in your seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. From Abraham came two sets of offspring. The first offspring was the physical seed of Abraham. The second is the spiritual seed of Abraham. The physical seed of Abraham is the Jewish race. But the spiritual seed of Abraham is every person from all nations who have put their faith and trust in the seed of Abraham, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, in your seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice voice. From Abraham came the natural and the spiritual seed, and they're also seen as something else. The natural race of Israel is seen as the sands of the sea, racial Israel. Sand is on the earth, and as many, I mean, so many grains of sand, you couldn't count them all. But the second he said that would come from you is the stars of the heaven, and this is a heavenly race. The saved of all nations for all time periods became the seed of Abraham. So, the racial Jew is descended from Abraham's natural seed, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the spiritual seed of Abraham is the Lord Jesus Christ, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed, capital S, were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to your seed, who is Christ, the saved of all nations come from the spiritual seed of Abraham, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Galatians 3.29, it says, and if you are Christ's, we are, we've accepted Jesus. If you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So I've accepted Jesus Christ. I am really more of a Jew than a Jew who has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What I'm saying there is not a physical Jew, but an eternal Jew is one who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And of course, Jews or Gentiles all can receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And especially the New Testament was filled with both. In Jerusalem was many Gentiles. In Jerusalem was many Jews. And uh, all around Jesus Christ, many Jews and Gentiles received Jesus is Lord and Savior and are joined to Abraham's seed. I remember one time that uh, in Luke chapter three, in fact, why don't you just turn there. The racial seed is not necessarily the spiritual seed of Abraham unless that racial seed, that person, a Jew by birth, receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Luke chapter three and verse eight uh, Jesus said, therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. He's speaking here to the Pharisees. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. If you're talking about the physical race of the Jews and say they are somehow blessed, he said, that's not it. He said, they're just a physical race like anybody else. Now, yes, I will say this. The physical Jew today has protection and promises given to that natural nation, even if they don't accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, the nation of Israel will last forever. The nation of Israel is the only eternal nation on the face of the earth. From the time that God set it up, and we actually don't even know when Jerusalem was set up, because back in chapter 14 of the book of Genesis, Melchizedek met Abraham and Melchizedek was called the king of Salem. Salem was another name for Jerusalem. Jerusalem existed even way back there. So in essence, Jerusalem and Israel are the only nation, is the only nation on earth that is eternal. Every other nation comes and goes, comes and goes. Rome, uh, the glory of Rome is still around today, the, the Roman nation. But again, you go back and look at the Hittites, you go back and look at all these other races that were back there and world empires, they don't even exist anymore. And so, but the other nation, uh, the other nations that we see around us are just temporary nations. Israel will last forever. It'll last throughout from the time that it was created. We don't know when, all the way down till today. 
and it will go into the tribulation. And in the tribulation, all attention will go back to Israel again. And then after the tribulation, Jesus Christ will sit on the throne in Jerusalem for a thousand years. After the thousand years are over, God will renovate the earth and have a new heaven and a new earth. But even at that time, when the new heaven comes and rests over the earth, guess where it's gonna rest over Israel? It's called the new Jerusalem. It's always going to be the center of attention for God. And again, he spoke, Jesus spoke to those uh, religious leaders and said, I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham, even out of these rocks. So it wasn't the natural race he was talking about. It was the spiritual race. Take a look with me at Matthew chapter 13. Here Jesus compares the nation of Israel and the Jews of the nation of Israel to the church itself. And while the church is going on, Israel has been shelved. Uh, I like to think of it this way. You know, you, we often think about the, uh, the uh, races in the earth today and we think about Israel. Honestly, to be truthful with you, the nation of Israel was given the Great Commission. The Great Commission did not come into being just at the time when Jesus started the church and sent us out and gave us the Great Commission. The Great Commission was actually given to Israel in the Old Testament. And so in Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 and verse 44 and verse 45, Jesus gave a, par a parable and both of Israel and uh, the church are mentioned in this particular parable, again, by a parable. He doesn't get any teaching on the church, but he mentions the church and then gives us a, an analogy of it from here, this parable. And he says in verse 44 and verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. But when a man has found it, he hides it. And for joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking the best pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and he bought it. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. The first thing he mentions is the treasure, and that's Israel. In the Old Testament, God gave the great commission to Israel. What is the great commission? Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, that's exactly what's found in Isaiah 52 and verse seven. And it says there that the uh, kingdom of God where the Israel was concerned, it says that they are to go into all the world, preach the gospel. And here's how it's said, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of them. That's the feet that take the gospel. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of them that bring glad tidings of peace. Glad tidings is the Hebrew words for good news. It's the gospel. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of them that bring the gospel to all nations. They were supposed to do that. And the problem was, is that Israel, at first they did take the gospel. I mean, you think back there of Jonah, the book of Jonah, he was sent to Nineveh. And in being sent to Nineveh, did he go there and preach the law? No, because the law was never to be preached. It was given to one nation to Israel. But what did he preach? What the law taught of, and that was salvation through Jesus Christ. The purpose of the law was to bring us to Christ. So he took the uh, gospel to them. And what was the one word he yelled in the streets? Repent. He just kept yelling, repent. And you know what the people did? They repented. He didn't go through the streets saying, men, be circumcised and quit eating shellfish and no more pork and things like that. That wasn't his message. His message was Jesus Christ and faith and trust in him. And so when he did that, the city was saved. We find it throughout the Old Testament. Uh, Isaiah was strong in teaching the gospel to other nations. He's the one that brought out that verse of scripture in Isaiah 52 about the uh, how lovely on the mountains of the feet of them. Jesus even quoted that later and so did Paul quoting that particular area that Israel in the Old Testament had the law or had the gospel given to them to take to the nations. When we come back, we'll be taking up from that point. And so here's the announcer to tell you how you can have a copy of today's offer. Understanding the end times, one of the most incredible and fascinating doctrines in the word of God will bring us comfort for the days in which we live. The Bible says we are to encourage and exhort one another with the knowledge of Jesus returning for his saints. In Understanding the End Times, Pastor Bob Yandian provides a thorough and exciting study to give you more revelation of these times in which we live. Topics include the seven dispensations, the dispensation of the mystery, the rapture of the church, the judgment seat of Christ, Daniel's 70 weeks, the temple discourse, the tribulation, the Second Coming, the Millennial Reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. To order Understanding the End Times, visit BobYandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, 
this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. I want you to hold that place where we were, Matthew chapter 13. We're going to take a look at verses 44 and verse 45 here in just about to continue what we're talking about. But here on the station, I mean, you know, the, the backdrop we've got, everything we've got, things have been changing so much and the ministry has been changing so much. I look at the short time I've been on television and things have just increased so much. The Bible says that the good things of God keep increasing in our lives every single day. And that's why I look forward to is even the greater things to come in the days to come. And again, the most important thing is not just what I'm teaching, but to see how that you enjoy it, how it changes your life. I've had so many testimonies come. One lady at a church in Omaha, uh, she came at the end of the service and she was talking to me and she said, uh, you know, and she picked up one particular uh, flash drive that I have. It's $500. She said, why is this $500? She said, because it's every book I have taught in the New Testament, the subject from the New Testament, and eight ebooks on the thing. There's 480 CDs on this thing. And I said, and, and I told her, I said, but it's all the time it took to get that thing together. And she said, but why would I want that? I said, if you'll plug this in your car, you know, what do we do when we get in the car? We turn on the radio. In other words, what we want to do is just kind of just blank out for a while. I don't want to think about anything. I want a non-thinking time between here and work. And so we'll listen to music, country music or classic rock or something or the news. We'll listen to some talk show. And we just get filled with all kinds of junky information. I said, why not take that time? and instead plug this in and just hear the word to the office and back. She contacted me and said that basically she, you know, she could hear one sermon going there and back and it happened every day. And she said after one year, she finally contacted me after one year. She said, I've been saved for over 30 years. I have never had this type of stability in my life as I've had listening to the word of God every single day. One revelation from the word of God is worth more than $500, but revelations every single day, how do you even put a price on that? You can't do that. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the word of God changing your life. That's what this broadcast is about. That's what my information is about. That's what my books are about. That's what my CDs are about. Flash drives, no matter what type of information and on ministersclub.com, which you can go to part of this ministry, a lot of that's downloadable. The uh, printed lessons are downloadable. My outlines are downloadable. So much on there to be a blessing to you. It's my purpose to help raise up uh, ministers in this generation, as well as brand new disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that maybe are saved, but they don't have any information of the word of God, salvation gets you to heaven. But you know what? Being a disciple here on this earth gives you victory in life over the circumstances of life and gives you a joy you'll never find any other way and a stability you'll never find any other way. So what I would like for you to do is just be consider, you know, again, becoming a partner with me in all this because the help you're giving is not just to me, but to help get this message out. Thank you so much. Matthew chapter 13, take a look at verse 44 and verse 45. Jesus said, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which when a man has found it, and he hides it, and for great joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking the best pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. Two things are brought out here. Verse 44, he says it's treasure hidden in a field. Verse 45, it's like a merchant man with the best pearl. The treasure hidden in a field is Israel. And in verse 45, the pearl is the church. The landowner and the merchant man in this is Jesus Christ. He buys an entire bit of property just to get one treasure that's in it. And then he goes fishing as a merchant man. Merchant men are on ships and he goes and finds one pearl of great price, bigger than any other pearl and perfect in every respect. The treasure is Israel and the pearl is the church. The treasure comes from the land, the diamonds, the rubies, etc. but a pearl comes from the sea, the ocean. This represents Gentile nations, and throughout the book of Revelation, it refers to the seas as the nations of the world. Treasures are formed, but a pearl is built. The treasure here that was found 
and God found this, this man found it, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He went and buried it in a field. Right now, we found from the verse of scripture, we are in the temporary blindness has happened to Israel. They have been shelved for a while until the church age is over. Then they will be brought back out. And this treasure that's hidden in a field is still there. It's hidden, but it's still there. And God has a plan for Israel one day when the church is taken out. But the pearl is built. Again, treasures are formed under great pressure. And Israel was formed under great pressure throughout the century. Centuries, but a pearl is built one layer at a time. It starts with one little irritating stone. That's Jesus Christ in resurrection. And then layer upon layer is added to it. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The treasure is buried until the pearl is complete and then lifted out of its place. For a pearl to be worn, it has to be lifted up out of its place. That is the rapture of the church. Once the pearl is lifted, the treasure can be dug up again. And that's what's going to happen to Israel. God has a plan. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, God gives the entire plan for Israel there to Daniel and basically says this, Israel's going to be built. Israel's going to be doing some great things. Israel's going to find their place. Israel's going to become one of the most powerful nations in the world. And they were uh, between the time that they came back from captivity, built, rebuilt the city of Jerusalem, the walls, the streets, and all that, it says, in troublous times. And then after that, they're going to become the great nation. And they did until the time Jesus came. They were the strongest nation on earth. They became the banking capital of the world. Their golden years were during that time. But by the time that period ended, they had gone down so far under religion. The Pharisees had taken over and no longer was the law that was given to them a symbol of Jesus Christ. They had to go make Jews out of all nations and not converts out of all nations. And Jesus talked about that. He says, you go into all nations. He said, and he said, you do this. And when he said, you don't even win them to the Lord. He said, you go into all the world. And he said, you make proselytes of all nations. Proselytes are simply people who you go out and win them over and they become Jews. Gentiles acting like Jews. This will not take them to heaven because again, the purpose of it was not. But what he said in that thing was this. He said, then Israel's gonna be come to a halt at the time when Messiah is comes to this earth and Messiah is cut off. So will Israel be cut off. And between that time and the last seven years is going to happen in Jewish time, which will be the tribulation. We have the church age in between. That's where we are. In other words, right now, during the time we're here, Israel's buried. They are the treasure, but God's uh, putting layer upon layer. And pretty soon the last layer will be put on the church and the church will be lifted out of its place and God will go back and dig up Israel again for seven more years. That's the time period of the tribulation. And the, it actually, according to Daniel's prophecy, that last seven years is called the time of Jacob's troubles. It is the last seven years of Jewish time. And again, that's what it's for. Israel is considered the treasure again, and we are considered the pearl. The church is the pearl. And as the pearl, we stand between Daniel's 69th week and that prophecy in Daniel's 70th. Jewish time has never ended. It just stopped. When the rapture comes, the church will go to heaven, but God will dig up the treasure again and Israel will complete its last seven years. The church cannot be here for the tribulation. The entire earth shifts back to Jewish time for seven more years. There will be a temple and boy, we are very close to having the temple. I've been reading some reports about what's going on in Israel and most everybody running for office over there is running on the office of rebuilding the third temple. How wonderful, because we know that when that happens again, the moment we're out of here, the sacrifices begin in the temple. So again, at the, the time of the rapture could be very, very soon. It may be further off that. I don't know exactly, but you know what? It's simply telling us that we're coming very close to the end times and there'll be sacrifices in the temple. None of them will save you. It all comes back to standing for Jesus Christ, the one that can. So world conditions will resume at the beginning of the tribulation as it was at the crucifixion. Israel will again be under Roman control. This is the last seven years, and this will be again the revived Roman Empire. A seven-year treaty will be made between Israel and the Antichrist, and then Antichrist in the middle of the tribulation will come and sit on the throne prepared for Messiah. But here's the good news. At the end of the tribulation, Jesus is going to come back and rescue Israel and rescue Jerusalem. And at that time, Satan will be cast off the earth. 
all demons and fallen angels cast off the earth. All religion will be cast off the earth. All sinners will be cast off the earth. The curse that was placed here at the time of Adam will be removed and the earth will move into the time of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will come back and break that curse that was started by Adam. And the Bible even says that in nature will rejoice. It says that the trees will clap their hands. The oceans will clap their hands at the coming of the King on that day. And we as the church will be here on the earth too to praise the Lord forever and forever. So at the rapture, the pearl is taken out and the treasure is dug up again. Israel will return again to be the custodians of the gospel and of the word of God. The, the gospel again that was given to them back there in the Old Testament to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, they failed in that at the end. They were very successful throughout the Old Testament, but toward the end, they failed to take the gospel to the world and they began to take the law to the world. And they made, as Jesus said, proselytes of all nations, Jews, uh, G Gentiles acting like Jews. So when the church is gone, the first one saved will be 144,000 Jews, 12,000 out of each of the 12 tribes. And what's gonna happen from that point on, there'll be supernatural evangelism during the time of the tribulation. The time of the tribulation is called the time of Jacob's troubles. And so again, it's returned back to Jewish time. And once the church is removed, the earth shifts back to Jewish time for seven more years. And God will wrap up his dealings with the Jews that after the tribulation is over, and the millennium begins, then all nations will be on the earth. And on that day, I love what Revelation says, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And he, Jesus, shall reign forever and forever. Guess where he's gonna reign from? Jerusalem. Of course he will, but the whole earth at that moment will be filled with believers only. The Jews that will be in Israel will be uh, re uh, converted. Uh, because why? All unbelievers will have been removed from the earth, Jews and Gentiles. All that will be on the earth at that time will be saved people, saved Jews, saved Gentiles. But those in Israel will be saved and Jesus will rule from Jerusalem over the entire earth for 1,000 years. What a wonderful thing. Their converts will preach the gospel in the first half. The 144,000 will spread the gospel. Their converts will spread the gospel even further. In the second half of the tribulation, because God wants to move this thing into high gear, angels will even come and preach the gospel in the second half. And finally, during the second half, also two witnesses from heaven will come and preach the gospel. They cannot be killed until the very end of the tribulation. The beauty of all this is that's where Israel is headed. Right now we're in the church age. God's dealings are with the church. And again, Israel has been shelved, or as like you said, that treasure has been buried in a field. But God's about to dig that thing back up when the church is taken out. And Israel will return, be returned to the custodians of the word of God and the custodians of the gospel. This is what God intended for them all the time, but they failed. And in Matthew chapter 22, 23, 24, God deals with this as Jesus talked about that at that time period, again, that the gospel will, will be taken from them. He said, you had it, but it's been taken from you. And now God's going to turn it over to another nation. And that other nation is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, which is being built today. Isn't it good to be a part of the church? But see, the more you know about where we are uh, right now, spiritually, time-wise in God's plan, the more you can understand there's good things yet to come. So in this particular area, again, what I'm offering here has to do with end times, and you'll be blessed by it tremendously. So until I see you next time, thanks for watching today. We'll have a good time next time we come back together to get around the Word of God. I will see you then. Ministers, you can access valuable resources free at ministersclub.com. You'll find topical studies, sermon outlines, PDF books, answers to many questions, and plenty of encouragement, all free. Just go to ministersclub.com. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.